Hi, my name is Albert Rab, and in this video series, I help our users understand concepts from web development a little bit better. And in the first installment of this series, we are going to look at the Web Inspector. This is a tool that is baked into any modern web browser, and it helps you to look behind the scenes of any website that you want to look at. This helps you to see all of the HTML and CSS code, and this is a great tool which will help us in the course of this series to figure out what's going on if our HTML and CSS code isn't working properly. And now let's dive into the video. You can do this on any website you want. Here I've just used one from my email newsletter. This is one of the web pages that each edition of my newsletter has. And here I can just click anywhere and I will immediately see a drop down menu. And there I can hit on inspect. And what happens immediately is that the web developer view comes in. This is what I mean when I say use the web inspector. Right now you can see all of the HTML and CSS code that corresponds to the website that I have here. Don't worry too much about all the stuff that is going on here on the right hand side of my screen. It's perfectly normal to be confused. Here the point is this is all of the HTML and CSS code. And if you move your cursor through the code, you can see on the left hand side which part of the code corresponds to which part on the website. Okay, so this is a really easy way to figure out what happens in a specific part of your website. For example, if I wanted to check out the header here, I could right click on that again and press inspect. And you see here that I'm immediately moved to the corresponding code inside of my web inspector. I can also make this a little bit larger here so that you have the code more legible. And really what my headline is here is just an h1 tag filled with some content, in this case, the content that corresponds to, well, what I have written inside of the title. I could even modify this here and set this to something else, like, I don't know, this is a new title. And if I press enter, oh my God, I have hacked the internet, everything changed. But don't worry, you cannot actually change anything. This is a safe playground. When you press F5 to reload the website, everything goes back to normal and that way you can be sure that whatever you change in here, you're safe, you can do whatever you want, you won't break anything. So that's what the web inspector is. In a nutshell, you see on top here all of the CSS code. Let me toggle it a little bit. Here you see that this is in a nutshell HTML code. It is some dog type tag, whatever that means. You don't really need to know what it means. It's just in an HTML file. Then you have an HTML tag. You see here the opening, here's the closing one. Then you have some header tag. In there you see a lot of metadata and also stuff like scripts and links to style sheets are loaded. Basically it's the HTML equivalent of calling library whatever like we do in R. More or less all of the prep work that you need for a website to run properly is in the header. And in the body tag, well there's everything. As you can see here, if I scroll over the head tag, I can't see anything on my left hand side. But the moment I move my cursor, over the body, you see that everything is highlighted because well, everything on there is inside the body. And if I untangle this, you will see a bunch of different tags that make up my website. And what you should take away from all of this is basically that everything in HTML and CSS is a rectangle. Notice when I scroll through the things, you will only see rectangular shapes on the left hand side. These are the tags and this is really what HTML and CSS is about. A bunch of containers nested into another or stacked on top of each other just to make a website that hopefully even looks nice. And the most important tags that you will need to know in the beginning are div tags. These are the containers that you see here everywhere. But if I look at my headline again, you will see here an h1 tag. This is a level one headline. There's also h2, h3 and so on. If I go into this section here, I might see a p for a paragraph which is still nested inside a div container, which often holds the content. So really div container is the placeholder where you want to put content in. And then you could throw in something like a paragraph or an image or whatever. Okay, so we have covered tags. Now let's talk about inline styles. What you can see here inside of my web inspector is that you often have this style element and then you have a bunch of descriptions like color, colon, some color, some semicolon, and then other stuff. This is a terrible format to read, but it is just what CSS is. But the good thing is that your web inspector helps you to read it by showing you all of the styles of a given element below here inside of the styles tab. 
You see, what you see inside here now is really the inline style that you have in here. See this part here, padding bottom, padding left. You don't need to understand what paddings do. You just need to understand that the styling instructions, that's what CSS code is. And this is exactly what we have here. It's displayed here in the styles panel as well. And you could even deactivate some of these things. Notice how everything on the left moved around a little bit as I deactivated these things. I could even change these numbers to something else. The point is this style view helps you to try out new style or see what's going on. So just with that, you should have understood the web inspector shows you everything that is related to the structure of your website. That's the HTML and the style, how it looks. That's the CSS. And you can see all of this together inside of the elements window. Or if you only want to look at the styles, you can see that in the styles. So now that we have covered styles, let us also talk about something more important, namely classes. It's a convenient way to reuse styles. You see, if you use inline styles like that and you use it a couple of times and you want to change stuff later on, then you have to style things over and over again. You have to modify your code at a lot of places. Alternatively, you could throw in your style into a class. Here we use these classes here. These are actually two, this BG WT background and text WT text on whatever. These are two cryptic class names, but the point is that there are some classes here that determine the style and we can look into our styles pane to actually see, okay, this class here, this text WT text on background modifies our current element in the sense that it sets the color to some variable here. In this case, it is this gray color. Don't be thrown off by the arcane look of the code here. The point is that color is set to some variable. We could also put in stuff like blue and we'd see that, okay, here, this part here became blue now. Okay, really what I want you to take away from here is that a class helps you to reuse styles. And here we see that this, this class seems to be used in the top of the website and also in the, in the date or in the text color of these icons here on the left because all of them became blue now. And one important thing to notice here is this dot. This dot is the notation for classes. There's also the hashtag, which is the notation for IDs like this one over here. It has the ID web header. Maybe we can find if we scroll down here, if it has some style defined for it. Doesn't seem to be the case. I guess it's only named for whatever reason. The point is you can have classes and you can have IDs for elements. And if you have CSS code for a class, you will see that everything is defined with this dot. We will revisit this in a later part of this series. I just want to throw this out there so that you have seen this and heard this before. Finally, let me mention that as you can see here, a lot of stuff is crossed out. See here, this style is crossed out. These two are not. And if we scroll down here, there's more stuff that is crossed out. This brings us to the concept of specificity in HTML and CSS. If you have a lot of style instructions with classes and IDs and whatnot, then it's hard to tell which style change actually takes effect. For example, if you have a div container that sets the color of the text to blue and inside of this div container, you have a paragraph tag that sets the color of the text to red and not to blue. In this case, the text would actually be red because the instructions of the paragraphs are more specific because this is the most inner thing inside of this nested chain of things. Right now, there's no reason to memorize any of this. I just wanted to tell you this so that you know that specificity is an important thing and sometimes styles get overwritten and this is exactly what you see when things are crossed out. And this is something we'll notice along the way. For now, you should just take away the general structure of HTML and CSS, know that there are classes and IDs, and we'll learn much more about this in the coming videos of this series. For now, just go to any website you want, do a right click and then inspect whatever you want. Have a look at the style window, change some values to something you want, deactivate some stuff and see what happens. You cannot break anything, but this is a really neat way to get to know how websites are built and what the individual components are. And this will already tell you a lot of the things you need to know for creating your own HTML and CSS. And that's exactly what we're going to do in the next video. So stay tuned for that and I will see you in the next video.